Essentially what we find is since 2009, the company spent over eight and a half billion dollars on just settlements, mostly settling without admitting or denying wrongdoing over a series of control problems that span well outside of this area, the CIO office, from segregation of client funds to money laundering issues to violations of CFTC position limit issues to, you know, the list goes on. And in fact, what we find is that several of the cases it was model failure and when they found that they had put in place a model that didn't work they manually they ran the system the model, they yeah. manually ran the system which didn't work either right before finally but before finally addressing it and in each of the settlements like segregation of client funds they were clipped in 2009 for failing to segregate something like 725 billion dollars of their own money from a 9.6 billion dollar client account and as part of the settlement, they agreed that they'd fix the problems in those areas. Well, they got hit again in 2010. They got hit again in 2012. They may get hit on Madoff. They may get hit on MF. We don't know. But obviously, they haven't really gone back and corrected those control problems. What is it that makes us confident that they've corrected the problems here? But Adam, Betty and Megan hit on something interesting. We had heard from JP, Jamie Dimon when he testified, and the same thing from Ina Drew. I'm sorry this happened on my watch. Something very different between happening on my watch and misleading investors, analysts, or um, which is Josh's regulators. Point. And and if you think about Sarbanes Oxley, that was in 2002. If you're the guy who signs the 10Q, you are responsible for what happens in your business. And if in fact they decided not to give the OCC their daily reports during a period of time. Why? And if it was Jamie Dimon himself making that call, it sounded like things got heated between he and CFO at the time, Doug Bronstein. It's not just on his watch, it's under his thumb. Eric, that's one of the issues, isn't it, right? It, it goes all the way up to Jamie Dimon. Well, in some cases, it does go to Jamie Dimon, in particular, the decision not to send regular reports for a period of time to the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, in this case, J.P. Morgan's main regulator. Uh, but what Carl Evan has not been able to do, either in the written report, which was uh, released yesterday at 5 p.m., or I should say in the questioning today, was pin the blame on Jamie Dimon. Clearly, yeah. the buck stops at the CEO. Certainly, the buck stops at the chairman of the board. He answers to the shareholders. But Eric, maybe he's not trying to. Maybe he's setting the stage because Jamie's going to be the next one we, to roll up there. We don't know. But to the degree there was an expectation that we would get more of that in today's hearing, it wasn't fulfilled. Well, I, I mean, so, I, I would say that what's interesting, though, is it's, it's still not clear whether or not this is the final chapter. Right. Or right. are we, right. is this the beginning of another That's phase? Right. We thought the final chapter was last summer. If you remember, it was Jamie Dimon when he was profiled in New York Magazine who said himself, I harpooned the whale. Well, guess what? It doesn't sound like you did. No. Uh, let's bring Fred in. Uh, and uh, Fred, do you chime in on here as to how high you think this is going to go after, after uh, I mean, the hearing's still going on, but after what you've heard so far? Well, I think the market actually was ready to move on until last night, because last night when the Fed came out and said both J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs didn't get the reporting right for the, the stress test, suddenly the market woke up and paid a lot of attention today, and that's why you're seeing the stocks trade the way they are. So I think this is, this is coming back into the market focus, and if it comes back into the market focus, it comes back into the focus on, on the entire company, including the CEO. Well, Fred, as we look at the stock right now, down about 2.3 percent, uh, one could certainly ask a question, so I'll ask you. Why isn't it down more? Well, look at it on a relative basis. Look what B of A, I believe, is up about 2%. So if you look at it in that sense, you're, you know, you're really, and you mentioned earlier, the, the financials are having a pretty good day here. They're driving the market higher. I mean, not the market higher, but they're driving higher. And so, you know, on a relative basis, this is a big hit for a company of that kind of market cap. Uh, Fred, it's Eric Schatzker here. Is it clear to you, or at least somewhat clear to you, that the, the London whale issue and what it says about derivatives valuations, what it says about modeling and market risk played into the Fed's calculations on the stress test and it in part, at the very least in part, explain why the Fed singled out J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs for weaknesses in uh, in their their own internal stress testing and ultimately their capital plan. Yeah, I agree with that, Eric. And the point is of, of putting out J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs is remember last year they got the nod, they got the pass, everything was good, they got the capital deployment. This put a lot of egg on the face of not just J.P. Morgan but the Fed too. And so the Fed's coming back now and saying, hey, wait a second, really it's this entire group with these huge derivative exposures that we don't feel like we have a good handle on. You know what's interesting about that, Fred, is you have to remember that over the past several years the the Fed has allowed most of the banks, minus Morgan Stanley, to move their derivative books into the bank 
and therefore be backstopped by the discount window. Does this increase the discussion about maybe we need to rethink that, maybe we do need to start fostering a separation of the non-liquidity portions, the non-hedging portions of the book from the bank? Right, and actually the regulations are going to talk are going to do a push out of the derivatives away from the subsidiary banks with that deposit funding later this summer and back to the holding companies way Morgan Stanley, but it's a limited number. I bet you're going to see a lot of push to get those derivatives back to the holding company where you start to see some market discipline. Fred, now that the uh, the Fed has gone through JP Morgan's assets and liabilities, is it a fortress balance sheet any longer? <laughs> Again, I think when you start talking, just as Eric was talking about, when you talk about a company with $70 trillion in notional derivative exposures, uh, these big five that have that, that, uh, that, those exposures, I don't think we can, any of us can say those are fortress Absolutely. balance sheet. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, can, can we and, call and, them and by the way, mansions? <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, we can call them bigger than the White House, Congress, and all combined. I mean, think about it. The balance sheet of J.P. Morgan is about 25% equivalent of GDP of the United States. Is that just too big? Well, the, the, the balance sheet is about one-ninth the size. If you start including the off-balance sheet derivatives, right, right. you end up in a different place. Um, yeah, even larger. Adam, even larger. we might Much not larger. see J.P. Morgan's stock take a hit at all. Investors might say, hey, we'll take a dip and buy here. But it's when the other shoe will drop. If the Department of Justice finds a reason to get involved, if they right. go after Jamie Dimon, then you've got an issue. But then all the then, gloves are off. If that but happens. until then, the six billion right? dollars was lost. They made a ton of money last year. People were fired. They got paid down. That's all well and good. That's finished. The question is, has Carl Levin uncovered something that's going to cause a real issue for senior men? And in fact, you know, we saw this with Fannie and Freddie in terms of the Ofeo investigations after the counting problems. There were consent decrees that were that were that were demanded of them. JPM is operating under consent decrees right this at this point. Is the OCC now, with egg on its face, forced to take more significant actions against board members well, or senior management?